Hi there, welcome back to the 30 and 30. If this is your first time here, the 30 and 30 is 30 videos in 30 days throughout the month of April, calving season, spring cleaning, and getting a whole lot of projects happening here on the ranch. If you've missed a bunch, I'll tell you what, you can check out a playlist. I'll put a thing for it somewhere up here. Uh, that uh, is the playlist for this year's 30 and 30. And you can go back and you can watch from the very beginning and see what we've been up to the entire month of April. Today is the 21st day of the vlog, only a few left, and we wrap the whole thing up with a 24-hour live stream, which takes place at the end of the month. 24 hours, live from the ranch, and you can hang out with us, chat in real time. We'll do projects, we'll hang out, we'll answer questions, we'll have lunch, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Today, we're doing something I threatened to do yesterday and didn't get a chance to do, and that is help out our bottle calf, Marty, with kind of blowing off some steam. I'm actually gonna take her from her stall in the corral, or in the, in the, in the barn, um, over to our yard. I've got her lunchtime bottle here with us, and all we need is our bottle calf. Marty was born a few days ago, part of a set of twins. Unfortunately, her twin set included a boy and a girl, which means that she may not be fertile, which means she may not ever become a part of the, uh, of the breeding herd. However, she is gonna stay on the ranch for her entire life. Hey, kiddo. Ready to come out? Hey there. <laughs> hey, Marty. Hey, Marty. Marty. No, don't go in there. It's like dealing with a two-year-old. Marty, come on. No, leave that cat alone. Come on, Marty. Hey, Marty, come on. Get out of here. This might be harder than it looks. The whole video might be just trying to corral her. Come on, let's go. Come on, Marty. Hey, Marty. Marty, come on. This is her first time out of the barn. We're gonna make sure she follows us, hopefully, all the way over to the yard. Hey, come on. Come on, kiddo. Come on. Marty, come on. Come on, Marty. Hey. Come on. Come on, kiddo. Get the yard. Come on. Oh, oh, you missed it. Marty. Marty, you missed the game. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, you missed it again. Wait a minute, maybe I did. Come on in here. Oh, there we go. Good job, you made it. Good job, kiddo. Made it into the yard. If I can catch her. She wants to zoom me. This is a zoom me now. Okay, maybe she doesn't want to eat. We'll let her run off some steam. Put her bottle inside, like Aaron said. Bean. Do you want to come inside? Yep. Oh my gosh. You ran into the fence. Are you okay? Come here. Come here. You're okay. Did you go boom? Did you go boom? Oh. 
It's okay. That's just bean. Finally, after uh, running around like a crazy animal, bean. We're hungry now. <laughs> And says, I like milk too. I'll lick your face. Make sure you're all clean. Maybe you should have been a, bo a moss bee. Alright, play with your friend. Okay, with that done, it's time for Jeff and I to get on to our main event. And that today is in the arrow quip. And uh, we're gonna be placing some scales over the next couple days underneath the arrow quip chute. Let's go inside and take a look and see what that looks like. So we've been talking here lately, you can't manage what you don't measure. And measurement is gonna be a huge thing over the next few months, especially as we continue our feedlot program. Um, we are actually going to be installing some true test scales. These are from cattlescales.com. Um, true test, a great brand and really easy to work with. So we are actually going to be putting load bars, which are these. Underneath a cattle chute. That way we can bring cows in and as we bring them in, we can weigh them. We can put pigs in it. We could put, we could put Jeff in it. Speaking of which, let's try to find Jeff because we're gonna be out here working in the AeroQuip and right now this is kind of our temporary feedlot as we've pulled all of our animals from the other side of the road and we've got them all over here. We have our A team in here in the AeroQuip and we've gotta get these guys moved over to another corral so that we can start working on this one um, and getting that head shoot over there moved out so that we can start concrete. We we'll probably have to get them a bale yeah. thrown over there too. Where are you going? That's our next group of steers. And we just need them out of the way while we get some stuff done. So we're going to be placing a concrete slab underneath the squeeze, which is this main part of the chute. So we have to disassemble this front portion, get it out of here, and get the chute out. And then I think we can put our form in and uh, start working from there. So we need to take out these nuts. 916, I don't know what they are. We'll figure it out. <laughs> and disassemble the front, and then we can just lift all this and get it right out of here, if okay. that makes sense. It makes perfect sense to me. Okay. On that end over there. Oh, that one? Oh. Right, swing that out of the way. That's the cool thing about all this. It's like Legos. <laughs> for, for, for older people. Mm -hmm. Tinker toys. Tinker toys. Lincoln logs. Lincoln logs. I actually, uh, my stepdad gave the kids his old Lincoln logs to play with. And both uh, both Lincoln and Grace were like, what? What is this? <laughs> like, you gave us toothpicks? Like, what's happening here? That was easy. Disassembly always nice to be done. Still not sure how we're gonna get this. So once we out. get that front piece out, scoot it we way. can scoot it that way. Yeah, and I think we can just kind of, you know, 
nudge it a little bit. But okay. do you want to run the bobcat or do you want me to? Um, they don't see you on equipment much anymore, so why don't you do it? <laughs> anymore? You've been here for like a week. <laughs> they don't see you doing much anymore, so why don't you get off your lazy ass and do something? I've been getting a lot of windshield time, so you need smell to get that? Some. Let me see later. Oh. All right. This thing's not that heavy. We can just pull it that way. Okay, well, Ooh, it started to move. I saw dirt shake. Yeah, it's not that heavy. It's just a little Okay. Well, how far do we have to go with it? Really? Uh, we only have to move it like six yeah, inches. Another two inches, maybe? Yeah, so. That's probably far enough, right? Yep. Now I see why you didn't want to do it. <laughs> I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, it's still intact. Can't say the same for the feeder. That's okay. We needed to fix that anyway. So our form, our, our area is 12 foot by four foot, but really that doesn't have to be dead on either. We'll just use our wood. I, I you know, if I don't have to cut wood, all the better, so. For seven inches. All right, then we're going to go level side to side, so we're going to have to just pick a point. screw it in one end see what i'm saying screw what in the these you put a screw through these holes oh is that what that's for yep. and then that holds it in place and then we start working from there to level it so we're going to pick our pick our starting corner and then i would just go right through that hole Yep. There you go. So that'll hold that there. And now we just take our level 
and we'll go across. And then you come over here and we just sink a screw into this. Actually, where's that sledge? It needs to go down just a little bit so we can get to a screw hole. Evil. See, the nice thing about these masonry stakes is if you're a little off, you just pound the stake. It moves it up and down. Well, down anyway. Amazing what they come up with. Yep. Okay, we're obviously going to need a little dirt in here. So, if we throw the bucket on something, put in a little bit of dirt to fill us in. we're working on this uh, Matt is actually out doing a whole other project and that's because we have a storm on the way I know I've said this before but they tell us on Friday we're gonna get a foot of snow and 60 mile an hour winds so while I can do without the winds the snow is definitely needed and this storm for us is kind of like a little bit of redemption hopefully after our last storm kind of petered out on us this one hits us hard of course it's going to be tricky with calving um, and we're going to have more calves on the ground actually we're up to 16 calves now and uh there's it's gonna it's gonna make some work it's gonna make some things a little bit difficult but that's okay um it's something we've got to deal with and we'll bring you guys along for the night checks and the calf warmer and everything else that happens during that storm Another thing we're doing to get ready for that storm, though, is harrowing the fields. And that's what Matt is out doing. He's actually working with a harrow that's about 30 feet wide. And what this harrow does is he drags it around, is it opens up the soil just a little bit. It breaks up the topsoil. It's also knocking down any kind of old vegetation or anything like that that might be left, although there's not a whole lot. And, uh, well, here he comes down. this also does is it busts up the manure in the field gets it spread out and basically we're getting ready for moisture we want that snow or rain or whatever it may be to sit in the field and soak in and we want to make sure we utilize every last bit of the manure the nutrients that are there and get them worked into the soil a big old clump of manure doesn't do us a whole lot of good but something broken up and spread out that's a lot better so Matt's been working out here uh, this is the north side of the highway back where we were working yesterday and just kind of getting this cleaned up because this is where our steers are going to pasture uh, for the summer. So we want to make sure that we get as much moisture into the soil as we possibly can. But it is a little dusty, so we're going to leave Matt to it where he can stay ahead of the dust cloud. And we're going to head back over, finish up. Uh, getting our forms done. I'm going to go check on uh, Marty, who's in the yard, see how she's doing on our way. And then uh, we've got to go check cows, obviously, uh, as we do multiple times throughout the day, and it's coming up on that time. So stick around. So 
our plan is to get this all set up, ready to go. We've got our concrete, but it's supposed to be like 70 degrees tomorrow. Yeah, you heard that right, 70 degrees tomorrow. Although, if we have a foot of snow on the way the very next day. So, I can't figure it out. But, we can pour concrete tomorrow, I'm hoping, get it cured, have enough time to get our new chute set, our scales in place, and maybe even get some weights on some steers. Our next class that's gonna be coming through, we wanna make sure that we get them set up where we need to be also. So, a little bit left to do, a little bit of dirt work left to do here on our form. And then we'll be able to cut you loose for the day. As we put the concrete in we just pull it up yeah there we go prep work is pretty much done um we're gonna have a little bit more left to do but not much and then um tomorrow we're pouring concrete as long as the weather holds out and it's supposed to 73 degrees for a high tomorrow 12 inches of snow the next day <laughs> just stupid it's wyoming it is wyoming i'm gonna run and grab kids we're gonna surprise them with marty in the yard it's coming up right there. Oh, hello Look who's here. You're the baby. Hi. <laughs> Look who's here. It's Marty. Oh, Marty. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Our friends are here. Your mother's Hi, Marty. here. Hi, Marty. Hi. 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 That'll probably wear all of them out. How's your day going? It's all right. Yeah? You sure? Mm -hmm. I should probably go check cows. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap the video up. Cool. Okay. Sounds good. All right. No one out there is laying like it's dead. Oh, thank you, sir. Anybody know where the gator's at? I've got it back here. Okay, cool. Does anybody want to go check cows? Okay. Well, that's a no. Nobody wants to go with me. All right, let's head out. Delivering it to you. I know, that's service, ain't it? All right, so we're all ready for concrete tomorrow. We are. All right, so that's the plan for tomorrow. I'm going to run out and check cows really quick, and I'll be back. I don't think there's anything going on, but... I didn't notice anything, but it didn't go out, so... Okay. Have fun. Yep, see you later.
All right, let's take a look at our sheet. We're actually up to 16 calves. Our sheet's a little bit out of date. Um, we did have one more this morning, another bull. So that puts us at seven bulls and eight heifers. So we're closer to evening out on the sexes there. Lots of questions coming at us about, uh, you know, what do we want more of? Do we want more bulls or do we want more heifers? But to be perfectly honest, it, uh, it usually ends up about 50-50 usually. We end up with about um, the same amount of, of steers as we do heifers or bulls as we do heifers. And uh, either way is okay. Our steers are gonna stay. They're gonna stay in the feedlot program. Our heifers will probably stay on the ranch and uh, help uh, with the breeding population. So that's our plan so far. So, hey, there's Bambi over there. Hey, Bambi. You gonna have a calf? You gonna do it? In case you didn't know, if you go back to Bambi's birthday video, you can comment on that video still and guess when Bambi is gonna have her calf. If you guess correctly, your name gets entered into a pool to win a free Our Wyoming Life t-shirt signed by myself or Aaron or Bambi or whoever else you would like to sign it. We also, during that video, offered up one of Mackenzie's t-shirts that she designed for Bambi's birthday. And uh, that was up for grabs just for saying happy birthday to Bambi. And I'm very happy to announce, because Mackenzie reminded me when I picked her up from school, that uh, we have a winner for that t-shirt. And the winner is Judy Carpenter. Judy, congratulations on winning the t-shirt. Uh, that custom made t-shirt from Mackenzie is still available on the website. You can get it there. Um, you can also order it uh, for about a month or so. It's got a limited edition type thing. So we're out here checking calves. Here is number 13 hanging out. The sun's shining and that means everybody's tired, warm, ready for naps. Uh, if you watch the webcam at ourwarminglife.com, uh, the cows are actually parked about perfect along with their calves uh, for you to get a chance to see some zoomies tonight as they get up and, and get moving. So guys, that's pretty much it. That was number 16, by the way, brand new calf, just born this morning. Tomorrow, we've got concrete to pour. Uh, not sure what else we got planned, but we do have concrete to get done along with whatever comes up here on the ranch as we continue the 30 and 30. Be sure to subscribe, come along with us, explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary even after April when the 30 and 30 ends with a 24 hour live stream coming up at the end of the month. I can't wait. So thank you guys for hanging out with me once again today. Thank you, Jeff, for all your help. Thank you, Matt, for harrowing and hopefully opening up the pores of the soil to be able to receive the rain. Thanks guys and pray for rain. It's all coming right here on our Wyoming Life.